Hey Nature School, it's Miss Cheryl here and today we are going to celebrate Earth Day. What is Earth Day? Have you ever heard of that holiday before? So Earth Day is a very special day where we celebrate the Earth. We learn different ways on how to protect the Earth. So let's go on a little adventure today and learn really cool things about the Earth and what the Earth provides us. And also, let's learn what you guys can do to help protect the earth and help keep it clean. There's different types of pollution. There's air pollution, there's water pollution, and there's land pollution. And when pollution happens, something is introduced into that environment and causes that environment harm. So we're gonna talk air pollution first. So air pollution happens when, um, when gases are released from different vehicles, machines, factories. Those gases are all released into the air and that those gases rise. So a big example of that is a gas called carbon dioxide or CO2. So to help with this, we need lots of trees. Um, trees are our biggest defense of kind of re reducing the carbon dioxide gases. So let's kind of discover a few tree species and why they're so, so good for the earth and our planet. So this is a very large tree called a honey locust. And honey locusts have their own defense. Actually, they grow really big thorns. They've had this defense for years and years and years, and that's just to help protect their branches from being eaten from other animals. Like I said before, trees are very important to the environment. Trees play a super big purpose in reducing carbon dioxide. It's called carbon dioxide emissions. That's because trees are plants. Plants go through a process called photosynthesis. So when their leaves are out, they absorb sunlight and carbon dioxide. So it's kind of like they're taking they're taking in carbon dioxide to make their own food so one mature tree can take in as much as 48 pounds of carbon dioxide and once they take in carbon dioxide and make their own food they release oxygen. So one mature tree can provide enough oxygen for two people for one year. That's amazing. Thank you trees. So one thing we can do to help reduce air pollution and to reduce carbon dioxide is to plant trees. So ask mom and dad if you have enough room in your backyard to plant a tree. While I'm walking to the creek to talk about water pollution, I ran into a really pretty patch of spring wildflowers. We have spring beauties. And we have these beautiful yellow flowers called trout lilies. Alright, 
to the water. And so I am at Hoffman Forest Metro Park and a very beautiful creek runs through this park. This is a part of Old Woman Creek. Now all of Northern Ohio's creeks, streams, all run together. Kind of you think about it as a, as a web, kind of connected to each other. And all of this water eventually flows into Lake Erie. So that network of different creeks and streams that flow into Lake Erie is all called a watershed. So a watershed is different creeks and streams that all end up in one body of water. Now this is a very important thing to notice because we have to take care of all the water that's around us because it all ends up in the one big body of water and for us that is Lake Erie. Now we have to be kind of conscious about water pollution. Now water pollution happens when big rain events happen and that rainwater ends up in our watershed, so our creeks and our streams. So that runoff can catch a lot of different yucky stuff. So it can capture different pesticide chemicals, different fertilized chem chemicals, and some, then that's not really good for something called water quality or healthy water. So there are scientists that study creeks and streams and they study the water chemistry and the substrate, which is the stuff that's on the bottom of creeks and streams. They look at vegetation and one really cool thing is they look for animals more specifically bugs so bugs can tell us a lot about the water quality of a creek or stream let's see if we can find some so i'm gonna find a good rock and i'm just gonna start flipping All right, here's a really cool thing. Oh. So this may not look like a bug right here. You see his head moving? Hello. This is called a caddis fly larva. And something that's really cool about caddis fly larva is they make their own houses to protect their bodies. Let's see if you can see its head right there. So they make their houses from different things they find in the stream. So they have, they make like special glue to hold everything together. So they can make their houses out of different pebbles or sticks or even leaves. And that helps protect them from predators. Caddis fly larva. All right, let's put him back and see what else we can find. That caddis fly larva is a very good thing to find here because they require clean water. You guys, I saw a stone fly. Let's see, where is he? Oh, there he is. Stone fly larva. Stone flies are the larval form of the stone fly. They kind of like higher flow of water. So I found them um, over there. Let's put them back. So 
So here are the crane, not crane flag, these are caddisfly larva houses. See how they're pebbles? Right here, right here. Here are water pennies, right here and right here. I did see there's a little guy moving in here. It's kind of hard to see on camera, but that is a, oh, this guy was blending in right here. This is a mayfly larva. Mayfly. Mayflies have outer gills to help them breathe underwater and to help get them oxygen. They also have three tails at the very end. So that helps you identify mayfly larva. So we found all of those macro invertebrates and that's a very, very good thing because some of those species require very, very clean water to live in. So scientists study those macroinvertebrates and other insects in creeks and streams. They also study the different substrate and vegetation, and they study the banks along creeks and streams to kind of detect erosion as well. And all of those things combined help determine whether or not the creek or stream is healthy. So now we're gonna move on to land pollution. Have you guys ever heard of littering? Some of you have, some of you maybe not. Do you know what littering is? Littering is when somebody throws trash that's not in the trash can or bin. Um, some people will just throw their trash anywhere especially in parks which is never a good thing because it can harm a lot of plants and animals one big thing that you can do to help stop littering is to throw your trash away throw your trash away in a bin if there's not a trash bin where you are just take your trash with you and throw it away at home Right, so what are some things you can do at home to help protect the environment and celebrate Earth Day? Well, let's discover, reduce, reuse, and recycle. A way to reduce is to reduce your use of single-use items such as plastic straws, plastic bags, and water bottles. So I'm going to show you a couple of really cool things that you can do to help with reducing single-use items. Alright, so let's go discover different reusable things you can use at home to help reduce the trash that goes in landfills. So do you guys use sandwich bags? A lot of us use sandwich bags to pack our lunches with. So we'll put snacks in here or sandwiches. And then when we're done with it, we usually throw it away, right? Yeah, so this is a reusable sandwich bag. So once you put your food in here, zip it up like a regular sandwich bag, eat your lunch, and then wash it out with just soap and water and dry it and use it for later. Next thing, you can take your own forks and spoons when you pack your lunch. So sometimes there are little kits like this that are designed for lunches that have everything you need in here. So instead of using a single use spoon or fork or knife and throwing it away you can just put everything in here when you're done take it home and wash it and use it again another thing you can use is get yourself a reusable water bottle i like to use this coffee cup because it keeps my drinks nice and cold and do you guys notice this do you guys like to use straws? 
I do too, I love straws. But I use a reusable straw that I can use over and over again. There's a special brush that you can clean it with. And it works just as well as the plastic straws. So those are different things you can use, especially to-go items, um, to help reduce your waste. So we learned how to reduce single-use plastics and to even reuse them. So that's a two-for-one right there. But let's kind of talk about recycling. And recycling is a very, very important process. Recycling is pretty much turning something old into something new. So to recycle at home, there are different recycle facilities that can take recyclable items like plastics and glass um, and also cardboard. But you have to make sure that when, you, when you're finished with the item, or let's just say like a plastic milk jug, you have to make sure you rinse everything off really, really good and let it dry. And then you'll be able to dump it in a recycling bin. You can also recycle old stuff at home too. You can make new stuff out of cardboard boxes. You can reuse different bottles. You can make different, you can make bird feeders out of milk jugs. You can make scoops out of milk jugs. You can make different planters out of milk cartons. You can do all kinds of really, really cool things with old items and turn them into something new. All right, that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you guys get out there and enjoy your Earth Day. If you do get outside, let us know. Take a picture and comment below. We would love to see what you guys are up to. Have a great day and happy Earth Day. Bye guys.